In this video I'm going to be taking apart the Seiko espresso machine that you see here. I'm going to be stripping it down to its basic parts. Now truth be told I've never taken apart an espresso machine before and so you'll see in the video it's kind of rough but if you need to take yours apart to repair it this will at least give you a general idea of what to expect even though at some points in the video I probably don't take it apart in the best way. So I do my best and hopefully this will just give you an idea of what to expect when you take yours apart. So with that being said, let's get started. So to take apart the machine, you're going to need a Torque 10 bit. And uh, if it's basically that star shaped, it's called a T10. Sometimes they're angled but this one is the star shape. So we're going to go ahead and take the whole thing apart. And you wanna make sure that you uh, just keep track of the, uh, the screws as you go along because you don't want to uh, either misplace them or try and remember which way anything went back together. So for example, this thing here this should be fairly straightforward. Just goes in like that, so the big side goes in right there. Smells good though. Even though I don't drink it, I like the smell of coffee. Okay, so that's not gonna come up yet. We'll pull this off, this just slides right off. And then on the sides here, I'm going to pull this, this out. Just comes out like that. And you probably know if you own this. And then on this side also, this door opens up. One of these is a door. And pull that out. Okay, so we've got a screw here, some screws there, and then you want to push that in and pull this component out and that reveals a lot more screws. There's no screws on the bottom but there are tabs so I'll show you those in a, in a little bit but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hopefully all these screws are the same size but if not that's okay. Alright this one's shorter and then you'll see that you have sil all silver screws on this side. Um, See if we what we have on this side over here. Okay, we got two of the black screws that are short. So the long one came from the top. I'm guessing this is a short screw. I guess I shouldn't speak too soon. Yeah, it's a short one. And there's a screw up here that holds the arm in. I'm guessing that this is going to have to come off, so I'm just going to do it now. So if this is in disrepair on the inside, okay, so that goes right there. that accomplished. I guess we'll find out later. Okay, back to this side now. Okay, so these flat silver screws are all coming out from of this side here. That one felt like it came apart already. Oops. I need my uh, magnetic 
I've got a telescoping magnet. This one looks like it probably got damaged in shipping. Maybe I'll see if I can make some cocoa. Cocoa. One more screw here. And let's see what comes up. Nothing. Okay. That's not totally obvious how any of this comes apart. So let's take a look at the bottom. recess here, this cover. Okay. All right, we got that off. So this is just kind of a friction fit, it looks like. Okay, there's a screw. So we're gonna have to take the top off first. Let's see if this pries up.
All right, so if I break this, I'll just be showing you how not to do it. I'll take that out. Okay, now, go ahead and unscrew this panel here. It's a short screw right there. Okay, making some progress. Okay, so this this nozzle slides off, and then there's a screw right in there. So we'll go ahead and take that out and see if that makes the bezel come off. And let's see, I'll turn this, I'll turn it to the left, or I'll turn it to the right, so that I know, just in case there's a funny part in here, that I know exactly Oh, I took it off. Okay. All right, now there's two more screws in there. Okay, so that pulls off the whole Front bezel, we don't want to lose these screws though. All right, let's see if this comes off now. Let's see if we can fix this. All right. Okay, so when you take off the, uh, the top here, just want to make sure that you don't ruin any of these components. This is this looks like it's some type of thermistor, thermal sensor, right here. Um, actually, this feels like it. It's just a heating plate. Maybe it either dissipates heat or it radiates it. If you put your cup, I don't know. Maybe it's a feature. Okay, so here we have the broken. Um, tray and so what I was thinking of doing is getting a piece of metal and reinforcing it up in here I'll have to sit and think about how I'm going to do that okay so let's go further here to take off the front bezel there's a screw here Now, I imagine the biggest problem with something like this, as far as failing, is actually just using hard water in one of these. Um, okay, just some plastic tabs that kind of hold it in. OK, 
Okay, so this is the front bezel of the espresso machine. So you have the control board and all of the uh, components that plug into it. So this is the brains of the espresso machine. Now this part here just kind of pops off like that. And then you have this here. As you can see, that's pretty nasty looking, but that's to be expected. Okay, so now we're going to take care of this here. We're going to take the screws out of there so we can get this big plastic dish out of the way. Okay, we'll leave the ground on. Okay. So here we have the uh, heating plate. We'll put the screw back in. Just leave that like that. Okay. So now we're going to take off this screw. And this one here. Okay. 
and then these on the both left and right sides. Okay, so the arm here is held in by this pin and it's a friction fit. Now sometimes I have a tool that takes off the ones with the holes on the side. But this looks like it's just kind of friction fit on, so I'm going to try and gently pop it off without breaking anything. It looks like I might be able to do it. So there we go. So now we'll go ahead and pop this off. Okay. And we'll feed this back through like that. And so we can put this big thing aside. All right, and this is just a friction fit as well. There's no screws. So we'll um, use the power switch. Well, we'll come back to this one. But we will unplug it if we can. Okay. Pull this off now. Okay, now we're really getting down to the guts. The guts of this thing. Go back to my bit. And it is really nice that they've used the same bit the whole time. A lot of times they'll just switch. So I've decided already that I'm not going to try and fix this because the plug um, I found I saw right before I took it apart that is broken. The housing around the plug is broken, so so now we're working on the grinding assembly. Who knew these were so complicated? I guess that's why espressos or machines are so crazy expensive. I mean, they really are. Oh, look at that. That's cool. So this is the whole grinder, grinder and the housing. Let's see. Plug. Okay, so that's spring. So I'll probably include that there. Okay, so here you can see the whole grinder. It's pretty gummed up. But that's just the nature of the device. Okay, we'll go ahead and unplug that. 
Okay, what's next? Put a screw right there. This is kind of a heat moisture barrier. And uh, I didn't realize that these were this complicated. So this is this is the power board. This provides power to all the different components. Does smell nice. As far as fixing appliances go, this one smells great. Okay. And there's a few screws on this board here. One over here. Let's see if we can just pop this out. So let's get to it in a minute. Okay. So there you have, I just unplugged that. So here you have the power board. Now these capacitors can go bad. If you have a bad power board, chances are, and it's a capacitor, these bulge. Not always, sometimes they leak, sometimes you can see staining or marks. But this is the power board for the unit. All right. That looks like Italian handwriting. I lived in Italy for a couple years. Okay. What's this? They threw us off. They put a Phillips screwdriver bit. Phillips screw in there. All the crazy things they could do. Son of... Oh. They did that because they don't want it coming off. It's like it's, uh, sealed. So we won't, we won't bother with that one unless we have to. Let's see. Here's another one. Okay, so I cleaned up a little bit, and uh, let's keep going. So there's a screw right here. If you're fixing yours, there's a screw there so you don't have to take off all of the clips. I'll just do that for now. See if they come off. Okay, let's inspect and see what else we have that can come undone. Okay, this looks like from this point that it's actually friction fit. And we're going to screw these back on since it's all more or less one part. But I can tell anyway. Or whatever. Okay. Let's go on the back side now for a minute. Okay, here we have a, a 
looks like a giant capacitor. The friction fit. Okay, so this just kind of pulls pulls out like that. So these can go bad as well. That part just threads right on. Silly me. So this part right here, if you can see, kind of has to twist. Okay. So right there, it had to twist or twist and then come out. So now we're going to take off these part, this part here.
Okay, now. Okay, so I froze the video. Right here, I damaged the hose, and there's a way to do it without damaging the hose, and I'm gonna show you in a few minutes after I take off the section how to take this off properly. So the next section, you'll see me remove a panel, and I'll explain it then. So to not damage the hose, you need to take off the panel, which I'm about to do in this part of the video. And that will give you access to the other side where the hose is, the, the line is connected. That way you can disconnect it from that side instead of using a screwdriver to pry it off on the opposite side. So do that instead and it should be, it should be a lot better. Okay, so there you have it. Now you know why espresso machines cost so dang much. Thanks for watching.